Hello everyone, and I apologize for the delay. We had some technical difficulties. My name is Wes Hughes. I'm a member of the Baxter Citizens Committee. The Baxter Citizens Committee, as you may know, is the officially recognized friends organization that supports both Batsto and Atsign, assisting the state in many ways. So we're at the Batsto Post Office today, and uh, we're going to take several minutes to kind of walk you around and share with you the unique history of this building and this operation. This really is a unique place. Um, it's even more unique because there's no Wi-Fi here. Um, so we're doing this off of a, off of a cell connection. So, um, in a moment, I'm going to introduce another member. I will introduce another member of the Baxter Citizens Committee, Paul Purcell. And Paul was actually going to walk you through the post office and share with you some of the very interesting history. So, Paul, um, Postmaster, where are you, bud? Well, good afternoon. Welcome to the Batstow Post Office. I, uh, I'm not a historian. I'm going to start that right away. I'm not a postmaster, so I got my notes here I'm going to work from. I just thought we should go and uh, talk briefly about the, the history of Batstow for those of people who don't know it. Uh, 1766, Charles Reed decided that the, uh, the Batstow and the Mullican Rivers was the perfect spot to start up the bog iron industry. And uh, he, he, he birthed Batstow Village, more or less, and uh, started a foundry here that, that became very successful. Um, during the Revolutionary War, uh, Colonel John Cox uh, talked to a good friend of his, George Washington, and said, how about I start giving you ammunition and other necessities for, for the war? And the, uh, the furnace worked day and night uh, throughout the war to furnish stuff to George, the, uh, the equipment to George Washington he needed for his Continental Army uh, to, to, to win the war. And, uh, the, the, the industry took off from there. Uh, in the, uh, the 1840s, uh, the bog iron industry uh, started to fall off as, as the steel industry, the iron industry moved to other areas of the country. Uh, but Baxter stayed very profitable with the glass making industry. Uh, they made mostly window glass. Uh, and I've, I've heard numerous people tell me that the the sand in this area made such fine glass that not only did we ship glass products from the area, not just Batsco, but uh, other places in the area, but we also shipped the sand around the world to make, uh, so that glass makers in other areas of the world could make glass products, such fine glass products. But back to the post office. Uh, in 1798, Adsign got the first post office in the Pine Barrier. You know, became the Pine Barrens. Uh, with Jacob Downing became the postmaster. Uh, in, in 1809, they decided to uh, start scheduled postal routes throughout the Pine Barrens. And they went from Philadelphia to Haddonfield to Taunton to Atsign and Tuckerton. Uh, Wednesday through Thursday, they made a trip to that direction. And Monday through Wednesday, they went back, stopping in each post office, using a stage for the post office. And uh, 1815, Suey's Inn, not far from here, uh, it's also known as Washington Tavern, uh, became the, a stop on the route. In 1827, Pleasant Mills, which is really just a, just a stone's throw from here, opened up a post office with uh, Joseph Heritage, was the, was the postmaster. At that time, Baxter did not have a post office, but Pleasant Mills had a post office because they had a shipping industry working through Pleasant Mills. Then in 1852, the Pleasant Mills industry started to, to wane, and the post office closed and moved to Baxter because Baxter had a glass industry that was booming. Uh, Jesse Richards wanted a post office went through the work to get a post office, and that's, that's where this, this uh, office came from. Um, the post office, this, this room that I'm in, uh, that you're in, 
was originally Jesse Richards' office space. He had to make certain conversions to, to make it a post office space, and uh, he became the postmaster. Uh, there's a number of things that, that he did uh, to convert it, and the amazing thing about the, the exciting thing about the Batsco Post Office is, is many of the, the things that he did are still in existence today, and that makes Batsco the oldest post office in the United States because it started in 1852 and it remains here today with enough original historic equipment that they can say that it's, it's the, the same post office. Um, okay. 1863, Jesse Richards passed on and his, and his son Thomas Richards became the postmaster. And then 1868, it was Andrew Stewart became the postmaster. Uh, but the, the fortunes of Batsco were start, starting to, to go away. The industry, the glass industry was gone, and there wasn't another industry to replace it right away. So the Batsco post office closed and moved back to Pleasant Mills from 1870 to 1882. In 1882, George Wright was the manager of Batsco for Joseph Wharton, and they decided, Wharton and Wright decided that you know, this was enough of an industry. He was trying to build an industrial town, a farming town, uh, not an industrial town, a farming town here, and uh, he wanted a post office. So they petitioned for the post office and successfully brought it back. Uh, from Pleasant Mills, but it was not uh, without problems. The Pleasant Mills post postmaster uh, managed to get 70 signatures asking the postmaster general of the United States not to not to move the post office. And there was some back and forth. Uh, it, I would say that George George Wright, from what I've seen, sent some letters to the right people in Philadelphia to the, the New Jersey Congress and uh, to Joseph Wharton, not really waiting for replies for any of them before he started uh, to, to demand that the post office be moved, and eventually it was moved back to bad stuff. Uh, let's see, he, he stayed, George Wright, stayed the postmaster then from 1882 until 1893, and that's when Basco had the last official postmaster for the post office. Uh, his name was Alonzo Norton, and he closed the post office in 1911 after Wharton had passed on and the post office shut down. Uh, it went away, uh, and it went away with um, the Pleasant Mills post office and other smaller post offices in the area. Uh, they, they're now served by the Hamilton post office, Batstow, became a rural free delivery along with these other ones and uh, that's the way it stayed. Um, Batso was shut down until 1966 when the Batso Citizens Committee restored the village, restored the post office and reopened it. Connie Birdsall was uh, the postmaster uh, as an employee of the state for the, um, for, for the post office. And in 1966, the day it opened, it was a big ceremony, and they loaded mail on a stagecoach. People had it stamped. It was loaded on a stagecoach, and they rode the stagecoach to Hamilton, and it, it operated as a post office for a number of years under Connie Birdsall and Gene Fox. Uh, so that's that's primarily the history. Now uh, there is no permanent postmaster. Uh, it's run by volunteers like myself who come and open it on special occasions and you can come in and you can still uh, put, get, have things mailed um, right here in the post office. Is there a zip code here? <laughs> uh, I'm being prompted. Yeah, that's a good thing. Um, okay, so the things that make the Batstow Post Office really special and for an historical. Uh, the first thing is it's the oldest one in the, in the nation, in its original spot. Uh, and this, the 
second thing that most people find interesting is when you get something stamped here at Badstow, uh, there is no zip code for the Badstow Post Office because it it's, was in place before zip codes came about and uh, it hasn't moved and so there is no zip code here. Uh, there's only four post offices in the United States, this being one of the four. The other ones are Lincoln's Birthplace in Kentucky, uh, Benjamin Franklin's in Philadelphia and Williamsburg, Virginia, although I also, just in historic Williamsburg, I also just found out recently that the one in Williamsburg, Virginia closed, uh, but I don't know if they still run the post, the, the postmark out of the, the, uh, the printing, the, the, the gift shop. Uh, I understand that they can, you can still get things there, but I don't know if they use the zip code or not. So we're one of four or three, maybe. Uh, uh, okay, so in the post office, there's a couple of things that are to, to, to look at. Over on your left, over here, is a, uh, a case with older stamps, pictures of Jesse Richards, uh, stamps meaning postmarks uh, that you can view, uh, some, some letters from historic time periods, uh, and you can also find some other post artifacts that have been moved to the visitor center uh, here at Baxdell. Up top is a picture of Jesse Richards. Jesse was the Jesse being the first postmaster. Uh, at the time, there were pictures of Jesse Richards and President Fillmore here, he was the president at the time. Uh, and then there's these other postmarks with the souvenir caches that were uh, sold and postmarked at different times. Uh, we walk around into the, into the postmaster's office. on the wall here. This is, a, this is an original clock from the, from the post office. Uh, that's not the correct time. Uh, we don't wind it anymore because of its age. It was restored uh, in the 1980s, I believe, by a gentleman in Hamilton who did clocks. Uh, but it is a historic clock. I'm sorry, the, uh, on the left over there, there's the pot-bellied stove. That's, a, that's original. We don't burn it anymore. No one's cleaned the chimney in quite some time. And we have a sorting rack over here. This is the sorting rack is original. One of my favorite things here is Jesse Richards' desk. This was his desk in the 1830s when he was using this room as the, uh, the iron master. And then it became the postmaster's desk. Uh, so the desk was built by a local carpenter, craftsman, in the 1830s. And if we open it up very carefully, because it's a very old desk with very old hinges, we can see handwritten the address for the, for the Department of the Post Office in Washington, D.C., handwritten by Jesse Richards. And the drawer labels here are all handwritten by Jesse Richards. That's actually his, his signature right here, because that's where he kept his uh, personal stuff. So this desk is from 1830. And a favorite for most people when they come to the post office is the safe. This was the safe for the Badstow industry before the uh, before it was a post office, it was Jesse Richard's safe, and uh, it's made of bog iron. I like to think this used to say Batstow up there. It just says S T, but I think it said Batstow. I'm not really sure, but if you come, I will tell you that's what it said. It's a double uh, it's a double iron door. It's very heavy. 
It's very heavy with very thick walls, stone walls, and then another iron door. I'm going to turn this light on so we can see inside. You can see this is where they would have kept uh, important papers for the for the industry that was here. You know, the bog iron, and the iron industry, and the glass making industry, and uh, of course any postal uh, mail that had to be stored in between um, the stagecoach stop. There's a hole in the floor there. Let me slide past you, Wes. And uh, this is, uh, some people really like looking in this hole. I'm not sure why, except for it's a hole in the floor. And uh, kids, kids love to come in and look at it. And they, they usually are standing on it when I tell them to step off the hole in the floor. And we can look, open it up. And it is a hole. And I'm not really sure what's down there. A very as, deep hole. It's a very deep hole. As far as I know, it's never been, uh, no one's ever been in it. Except as when kids always ask me what's in the hole. And I tell them, I don't know. My son wanted to go down there and investigate at one time, and I lowered him down. And they asked, what did he see? And I say, well, he hasn't come back yet. And I, I close the door, and that usually, that usually keeps the kids from wanting to go down there anymore. Uh, he, he did come back. It was, uh, he actually, he never went down. He, uh, he has a fear of spiders and never, never even asked to go down. But that brings me to the, uh, what we have at the post office. Now these, these things up here you're looking at, these are interesting. Uh, these are, these are beams, metal beams that run through the walls and hold the walls up. And then they stick a pin in it to keep the walls sturdy. Now you see these on the houses at Batsco and other places. And they look very plain. That's how you know this was, this was a plain building. Uh, when it's done like that because normally when you look at the mansion house I don't know that we can see it from here but when you look at the mansion you'll see stars and the star is the, covers the decorative pin there the star is a decorative pin that covers the, uh, the, the, the wall beam There's a, there's a scale. I'm not really sure. I think the scale is probably from 1966. But the postal rates don't apply anymore. <laughs> so all this is original, Paul? Uh, well, this, this, this section probably was rebuilt. It doesn't really look like it's 1850 to me. Mm -hmm. uh, but, uh, but I don't believe this. The counter would have been here, but I'm not sure it was originally like this. Until maybe the... the uh, the 1960s when they reopened it more as a as a store i'm not sure when it was added on is it just one floor is there an attic oh, there's, or anything a, here? there's there's yeah this is actually for those who don't know this was the original general store up here this is the second floor of the general store area and over over here was the uh the general store um it sold everything. Uh, you know, people would come in here and they would buy whatever they wanted. Uh, eventually, the general store moved downstairs, and this became storage. Downstairs was storage for the general store. They switched places, and I don't know. I I heard it was because um, the Warden family really didn't want people standing in the front yard waiting for the general store, and so they they reversed it. Uh, there is an attic here. If you if you want to walk down here, Wes, you can see this hole in the in the ceiling. If you go up into the attic, there's a pulley that you can lower merchandise up and down for storage in the attic. This comes up, and then in the floor where you're standing, Wes is another hole that lowers things up and down from the, the lower section of the general store.
So when the post office is open, there's a flag flying out front. I don't have it out front today just because I didn't want people thinking we were open and uh, coming in to the post office. Um, but it's a 31 star flag, which would have been the flag that was used in uh, 1852 when the post office opened. Right now, this is more of a museum area. Uh, you can see there's glass products and pictures and cribs. Sewing machines. A lot of people want to know if this is a telegraph, but as far as I can tell, this is a sewing machine. But I guess, I guess so. You know, I'm older than a lot of people who come here and they don't remember sewing machines looking like that. Butter churns, candle, candle making. It would have been back, uh, back in the 80s or so, in the 90s, when the artisans were here, there were candle makers. I, I believe this might have been theirs. Uh, I'm not really sure. But you would take. Take, take these these off with this, the wicks on and dip them in wax, put them back up, hang them here, spin this around and take the next one off. And by the time it came back around, it was ready to re-dip them again. And you would dip it a number of times depending on how thick you wanted the candles to get. These are the uh, caches that you can purchase at the, uh, the gift shop. If you want to write a letter and send it to somewhere, you address it, stamp it, and bring it over here, and we can mail it for you. Uh, if you come on your own and you don't buy something, we normally have something like this available, a souvenir post office picture. You put a one cent stamp on it and you get the historic uh, no zip code cancellation. We do have postcards for sale here. Pictures are up here. There's some postcards at the visitor center and then some pictures here. Uh, it, it's, you, can, you can buy a, a stamp postcard here. Uh, Let's see, they're 50 cents, in, 50 cents each or three for a dollar, or you buy one with a stamp on it for a dollar. Uh, so that's good. Not, not a bad deal. It's a good deal. Mail it home. So, Paul, um, we should tell people that the Batstow Citizens Committee is always looking for help. Well, yeah, I will, I will tell you that the Batstow Citizens Committee is always looking for help in, in a lot of different ways. You know, when I first decided to volunteer here at Batstow, I wasn't volunteering for the Batstow Civic and Citizens Committee. I picked a, a spot that I thought I could enjoy and at my leisure. I went to the Nature Center. I figured, you know, the worst case scenario on a slow day, I could sit on the front porch of the Nature Center and watch the lake. And, it, and I did it for about a year, and I was correct. It's very relaxing sitting on the front porch at the Nature Center watching the lake. My son would come with me. He started looking for a little more adventure at Batso and started walking around uh, while I snapped it on the front porch. Uh, he came over and found that the blacksmith shop had lessons, that he could take lessons at the blacksmith shop. He'd been beating up metal, hot metal, at my house for about a year and a half and I figured, well, what the heck, I might as well get him a lesson if he's going to disturb all my family campfires anyway. And we went and we took lessons. And he, he was young. He could not take lessons. He was too young to take lessons. He had to be 18 to take lessons at bad stuff. But I did talk to the blacksmith here, and we were able to take him from him at another forge, not the state park. And we took lessons. We took lessons at, at, the, uh, at the forge. Now we're allowed to blacksmith at the forge, he comes over and blacksmiths. Uh, if you've been here and there's been a kid blacksmith, there's a good chance it's my son. Uh, I can look out this window during the Country Living Fair and other events and 
Watch him down there blacksmith as much as you can see from here. Uh, and uh, I volunteer at the Nature Center still. I volunteer at the post office. And I volunteer eventually. Um, I, got, I got in a conversation with Wes and, and uh, I got on the Citizens Committee. Bad so. Warden State Forest is always looking for volunteers. And there's a lot here. If you're a history person, maybe you want to come to Bad Stuff. If you're a nature person, you can come to Bad Stuff the Nature Center. Maybe you want to do some trail work. Maybe you want to guide hikes, hikes, uh, stuff like that. If you, uh, you're you interested in that sign, that still works from here. You know, come over here and uh, Get in touch with us, and we'll find we'll find something you love to do at Atsai. Yeah, there's a there's a wonderful beach with swimming at Atsai. Uh, maybe there's something you'd like to find over there. But yeah, Wes, uh, the Citizens Committee is always looking for help, always open. Come and contact us uh, at our website, the Facebook page where you're at. Of course, you know how to contact us through that. There's a, a website, atsovillage.org, that you can contact us through. There's a webcam on the website, so you can watch the forest around Basto 24 hours a day uh, from the top of the Wharton Mansion. I recommend if you try it, you, you look during the day because it's not very exciting at night. Oh, sorry. <laughs> a visitor. A visitor to the Basto Mansion. I should have signed them up. <laughs> But that's, uh, that's, that's about it. There's always something to do at Pasto. And yet when people come and I ask them as a conversation starter, have you ever been to Pasto before? And some of them tell me we come all the time. And some of them tell me I haven't been here. A lot of people older than me come and say I haven't been here since a school trip in fourth grade. And I tell them it's about the same. Nothing really changes. You know, my clock doesn't work. And that's a testament that this is, this is a place where time really does stand still. It's very, it's very uh, historic to come here. More so than other parks I've been to in other areas, other, uh, other states. This is really a slice of history, just the way it was. So, as Paul said, there are many things that you can do um, to help both the Batstow Citizens Committee, the park, at sign. <clears throat> Some are nature related, some are history related. And um, <clears throat> even if you like working from your laptop, there's things you can do there's to, things, there's things you, to you do can, the laptop. there's we'll, always, uh, we'll learn that this year. yeah, and there's, um, you know, like any organization, there's administrative things that need to be attended to. So we have people um, that can help us in many ways. So yeah. as Paul said, uh, in lieu of the visitor center being open, if you go to our website, batstillvillage.org, you can leave us an email and we'll get you connected with somebody that can help you get started. Yeah, you can, you can, uh, you can do that. You can come to the Facebook page. Um, as I know, there's a lot of photography people coming to Batstill to take pictures. I see it all over Facebook. You would, you would fit in perfectly, even if it was just to come every once in a while, take some pictures and, and allow us to post them on the Facebook page. Uh, we appreciate any assistance you can give us. Nothing's too small and certainly nothing's too big. So we're going to end it here because uh, people are starting to knock the door down. The word must have got out about Paul, so they're, they're trying to cave the door in. So. Yeah, it must be a very slow Sunday. <laughs> the world. So thank you all for joining us. Uh, we know we're not... Um, movie guys we're doing the best we can but we'll uh, we'll post this on the facebook site and we'll also also in the next couple of days uh, put it on the home page of our website so we'll have a click on that you can see both a tour of the first floor of the mansion and paul's good work in the post office so thank you all for joining us um, enjoy the rest of this beautiful day and uh, be safe take care Thanks.